Lord, for this day, oh God. I never would have met him without you, God. can even prepare a message is because somebody obeyed God. Amen. Amen. If they had to look at me with their own physical eyes, hallelujah, they would have been discouraged, hallelujah. Some of you know me now as Sister Grace, but they met me when I was still in my crazy life, hallelujah. When I was still coming to church to pretend, but when I, when I leave the church, I knew what I used to do, Amen. So I thank God for my spiritual parent, Pastor Patrick and Pastor Lege, for this opportunity and this privilege to trust me to bring the word. Amen. Amen. I'd like to honor God for my mother, for my brothers and sisters, my family. I always like to honor God for them because, as I mentioned, I have a testimony. Amen. Amen. So having them in my life, it's always a blessing. Amen. Can we put our hands together for my family? And I want to honor God for yourself. Hallelujah. This day was designed by God. This is a divine appointment. Hallelujah. It's raining outside. You could have been sleeping, maybe having excuses. But you being here, it's a divine appointment. Hallelujah. I don't know how you came here. I don't know what are the lies of the enemy. I don't know what is it that you have been experiencing. But I'm here to tell you that the devil is in trouble. Amen. Hallelujah. For the word that will come out today won't be grace word, but will be God. I told you when God uses a foolish thing, you better get ready. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes I like foolish things because it can confuse you. Myself, I'm, I'm amazed that God can trust me. So I give that God the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us all rise and read the word of God as it is will be ready for me today. Amen. We're going to start with the book of Job, chapter 1, uh, from verse 1 to 3, and she's going to continue until verse 12. She's going to skip verse 4 to 7. Amen. Job, chapter 1. Verse 1 to 3, I'm reading today from the NIV version. In the land of Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. He had seven sons and three daughters, and he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 
500 yoke of oxen and 500 donkeys and had a large number of servants. He was he was the greatest man among all the people. He of was the, East. the greatest man among all of the people of the East. Please, if you can underline that part, that would be great. Continue. We're gonna jump to verse seven, verse eight to uh, twelve. Verse eight to twelve. Oh, yeah. Then the Lord said to Satan, "Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright." A man who fears God and shuns evil. Yes. Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied. Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hand mm -hmm. so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. Mm -hmm. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has mm -hmm. and he will surely curse you to your face. He will surely curse you to your face. Continue. The Lord said to Satan, very well then, everything he has is in your power, but on the man himself do not lay a finger. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Amen. We're going to read Job chapter 2 from verse 9 to 10. Hallelujah. Job chapter 2 verse 9 to 10. His wife said to him, are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. He replied, you are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? Shall we ex accept good from God and not trouble? Continue. In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. Amen. One more in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Amen. And very last one, so we can start. Second Timothy chapter four, verse seven. Second Timothy chapter four, verse seven. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race, and I have kept my faith. Father, I thank you for your word. God, speak to us this morning. God, don't let us leave this place, Father. The same way we came in, Father. Father, we fight the good fight. Oh, God, we finish the race. And today we will keep our faith. Oh, devil, you're a liar. This place doesn't belong to you. This is a holy ground. This is a sanctified place. Whatever you try, devil, today you fell because we are here and we kept our faith. No matter what we've been through throughout the month, no matter what we've been through since January until December, until November, look at us now. We kept our faith. It may not be where we want to be, but we are farther from where we used to be. We may not have what we want, but we have what we need in Jesus' name. Amen. I bless you for your word that will bring life changing, that will bring a mindset of Christ. I thank you for understanding. I thank you for power. I thank you for wisdom and this place. And I rebuke and cancel every plans of the enemy, any type of destruction, heaviness in the place. By the sound of my voice, I declare that this is a day of restoration. This is a message of hope. This is a message of encouragement. This is a message of faith. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I thank God for his word. A title today, my subject is, Can God Trust You With a Trial? Amen. Sometimes we we are very okay when God trusts us with blessings. It's very easy when God bless you. But I love when we read earlier that Job replied to his wife on in Job chapter 2, verse 9, 10. He said, You are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? Amen. It's very easy to receive when God bless you. 
But what it is that we do when we have been trusting with trial. Oh, trusting with a trial. I say, God, what do you mean? What is it that you are saying in this season? He's saying that he is looking for people that can endure until the end. It's amazing that when Pastor Nike was doing, uh, preparing us today, she mentioned something and I was very excited because I felt that God was just confirming what he was telling me. She said, many can start, many can run, but what we really define is how you're gonna finish it. You can start running, running today, but we will know until the end. It's not about how you start. It's good that you will define how you will finish by how you start. But how you will finish it will speak a lot about you. And I love Job because as I was reading Job, I said, my God, this man was trusted with any kind of trials. He was hit by his health, wealth, money, family members. God trusted this man. And I said, God, how can you trust me? with a trial. Amen. Amen. And as I believe that when you walk with God, you can all tell me that one of the things that the devil is always fighting, it's never been our money. The devil is not after your car. The devil is not after your degree. The devil is not after your marriage. The devil is after your faith. That's why the Apostle Paul said, I fight the good fight. I finished the race and I kept my faith. A great man like the Apostle Paul, at, at the very end of his life, I always wonder, why is it that he didn't mention all the accomplishments as far as what he wrote in the Bible? He was so proud of himself to say, every day the devil came at my door to tell me, give up on this God, give up on this Jesus. But he was so proud to say, I fight the good fight. Oh my God. So the devil, he's not afraid of people with money because money can make money. The devil is not afraid of people who have cars because <laughs> actually he can make cars, amen? Am I lying? The devil can give you cars, amen? He's not afraid of a person with position because he can give position, hallelujah. But what he's afraid of is men and women of faith. The devil had a problem with Job because he said, this man, <laughs> I love what he did. And what's very important in the story of Job is that the devil never initiates the challenge. God initiates the challenge. My trouble started the day that God praised me. The day God said, she's pleasing me. That's where my trouble started. Job trouble didn't start when the devil came and said, God, why are you blessing him? God himself, if you read, the Bible said in chapter 1 that God was in the presence with his, the angel. And the devil came. And God told him, Joe, have you seen my servant? Oh my God. I wish sometimes when we have trouble, we take the time to pause a little bit and ask, is this trouble caused? Because I please God or because I sin against God. And that's where I love the Holy Spirit. Because if you are connected enough, you will recognize when a trust, God is trusting you with a child. Amen. Amen. So Job is a great example. The Bible said that God himself told him, have you considered my servant? And because based on the, the enemy philosophy, he believes that your faith is based on what God can do for you rather than who God is for you. Understand this, what made Job a man of faith was not the money, it was not the money that he had. And if you see the Bible even present Job, not according to who he is, the Bible speaks that he was a rich man. He was the greatest in the city, in the city of where he was living. So we see that according to human being, a man or a woman of faith is a person who has stuff. 
somebody that has money today, Christianity, we will believe that this is a person of faith. A person who has all the accomplishment of the world will be the person that men and women will, will call a man or woman of faith. And don't get me wrong, I love money. <laughs> I love cars. I want to go to school so I can be somebody. But I have to explain this, that what is it that made Job a faithful man of God? It's not what he had, but who he was in God. When God spoke about him, he didn't say, did you consider my servant because of the money, of the children, of what he had? He said, have you considered him because he's a blameless man? Faith has nothing to do with what you have. Faith has nothing to do with what you can accomplish. Faith is who you are for God. Job, the man of faith. What qualified Job is not what he had. Because when the enemy came, he said, it's because of what you give him. It's because of all the things that he has. That's why he believes in you. And I love God because God was so confident that as long as... <laughs> I like what he says, he says, spare his life. You can take the money, you can take the cars, you can take the children, you can take everything, the reputation, you can take his money, you can take everything, but please, don't touch his life. Or oh, there is a divine limitation that the devil, as much as he's been trying to touch your life, there are things that he cannot touch in your life. There is a divine limitation. That's why we ought to believe as men and women of faith that as much as we can face adversities, there are things that the devil cannot do until God gave him permission. God told him, you can go ahead and do it, but don't touch his life. I said, God, are you talking about physical life or you are explaining me a different kind of life? If you see, if you continue, it's a very long story. The very first time, the children, the second time, he came back again and he said, touch his life. And they touched Job's life. I said, but what did you mean by saying, don't spare his life? God is not talking about his physical life here. He was talking about the being of Job in the spirit. What the devil cannot do is to touch your faith. And he didn't know. And I wonder, I said, God, how would you allow uh, 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 Satan to, to come and to try me to, to do all the things that he had to do? He said, because I'm so confident all the people that I choose to go through trials. Job was qualified, not because of what he had, but he was qualified because of who he was for God. Oh, I thank God for that. So, we see that God now gave the devil the permission to go and to test or to touch the life of Job. And I understand that God let it happen because he knew that at the end of the day, Job will not give up on his faith. He knew that Job will lose his family, money, everything, but he will keep his faith. Because God commands the enemy, don't you dare touch his life. That's really number one point that we have in mind. And I understand that the level of my attack will determine the level of my faith. As much as I may be fighting, God knows that faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of God. So God knew that he had already invested so much of his word in Job that even when the enemy will come, the word of God will be so strong in him that he will be able to resist every type of attack that he received. I understand now that every time I receive an attack, the reason why I gave up is because I didn't have enough word of God in my life. I understand now that whenever the enemy comes to attack me, it's not because it's after what I have, but it's after on who I am in God. But I love God because he can trust me with a trial. It's not pleasing, but it's worth it. Sister Grace, what do you mean? Are you encouraging trials in our lives? You see, some of us, when everything goes well, we don't pray. Can I be honest? When everything is pink, when everything is you, you ask, you have it. You barely pray. God knows that as human beings, we are so stable. 
when everything is perfect around us. And because he loves us and because he wants to protect us, sometimes he has to allow trials to come. Sometimes he's going to have to make you wait longer than all other people. Sometimes he has to make you miserable around everyone because his purpose it's never to destroy you, but his purpose is always to rebuild you up. My trials, it's an opportunity for God to better me. It's never a message that people lack when you're talking about trials. But let me tell you, God finds it a privilege when he knows that he can take you to the wilderness, when he knows that he can, he can cut up all the attention of the world and get you to sit and to hear from him. Why trials? Number one, God trusts us with trials for the people that he has blessed in our life. Did you know that somebody is waiting on you to make up your mind and to stop believing in God for them to be blessed? Do you know that by now there is a soul that's crying somewhere because you haven't understood that everything that you have been through was just for God to use you for somebody else. You see, some of us, God had to make sure that he break us completely and he's still breaking us, hallelujah. But he will place you at a level where people don't understand why you serve everybody. It's not just because I love serving, it's because of the brokenness period of our lives. You see me, you say, how come you don't? It's not that I was born like that. There are certain brokenness that God will get you to a level where you forget about your name, you forget about who you are, you forget about what you know because there is no way else to go but to be broken. Job, can I trust you with a trial? He can trust you because he knows the people that you will meet tomorrow. He knows the kind of children that you will have tomorrow. You know where you will go. So that's why sometimes you don't understand why you have to go through some things that other people don't go through. You can be born in a family where everybody can do the same thing, but there's something about you that's always different. And we want to go, why me? You, because he knows that in five years, in two years, in one month, in one day, there is a person that you will meet somewhere that will need your testimony. God trusts you and I with trials because he understands that who test burn our testimony. Oh, there is power in your testimony. That's why when you're still remaining silent, you are killing somebody who needs your wisdom of your testimony. If Job didn't go to what he went to, you and I will never know that my Redeemer leaves and he will stand at last. There are some verses in this book that we sing a lot of time, David verses encourage us. Most of his psalm was not written in the palace. He wrote them in the valleys. Your trials of today, your pain of today is somebody else's pain cure. But this is what we do. When God brings the trials, we run away from him and we get scared. And I like the fact that I understand that when God trusts me with the trials, it's not because I'm weak. It's not because I'm weak. God trusts me with a trial because he finds me strong enough to handle the devil. He finds that I have all the ability to withstand when everybody else says we fall. I say, God, why do you make me wait? Why do I have to stay the last? He says, it's not because you're weak. It's because I have invested my word in you. And I know that when everybody else says we quit, I can have somebody that will say, God, whether you bless me in 2015, whether you don't do it, Jesus, I will keep my faith because my love for you is not based on what you can give me, but my love for you is based on who you are. God trusts me with trials. He will trust you with trials because he knows that you can. He knows you can. He knows that his word is in you. That's why he cannot let you give up now. I can trust you with a child. Some people miracles depend on your trials. Some people miracles and life changing depend on you to just go through what you're going through. Today you can tell people, I know how it feels when you can have children. You can tell people, I know how it feels when you are rejected. You can tell people, I know how it 
feels when nobody likes you around. You can tell people, I know how it feels. Because you know people will observe you and say, you don't know my pen. You can talk to me. When you go to the hospital, you don't go to any type of doctor. You have to go to a doctor that's been through school based on your situation. Then you can trust them. Your trials is to bless somebody. That's number one. Number two, he said, God trusts us with trials to perfect our faith. Some trials, like I mentioned, you pray only when you go to trials. Some people, when they don't go to trials, they don't even come to church. Hallelujah. We see them just on social media enjoying life. Amen. We see them just enjoying life. <laughs> but when trials hit you, that's when you see we come back in the house of God and seeking for God. God will keep you sometime in some trials because he wants to perfect your faith. I wish we could understand this and rejoice when we go through trials. To know that what God wants to do in me is not to destroy me, but is to perfect my faith in him. Oh my God. So my pen, it's a purpose for God to better me. God, you crush me so I can know how to say sorry. God, you press me as the last so I can learn how to rejoice for others. Woo! God, you bless them in front of me so I can learn how to say I'm happy for you for real. Can I say something? Hallelujah. Can I crush you a little bit so you can learn how to serve? Can I crush you a little bit so you can learn how to love? Sometimes it doesn't make sense. But our blessings, the best that God can do for us, will always come out of those dirty places in our lives. Of those places where everybody mocked you, everybody made fun of you, everybody put you on the corner. And that's where God meet us and say, this is where I want to build you. Oh, Joseph was not built in his father's house. Joseph's faith was built when he was in prison, when he was alone, alone away from his family. Some of us, the best ministry that we have was not when everything was pink. Hallelujah. I wish you knew what I've been through. I wish you spent some night with me when I didn't know what I would be tomorrow. I wish you spent some night with me when I thought that I would lose my mind. But what I didn't know is that ministry is burnt out of bed. Oh, Job. Job. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know who came here and said, God, in 30 days, it's about to be 2016. But I'm here to tell you, maybe God didn't do it this year. Maybe God didn't do it this year because maybe you didn't sin. Maybe he didn't do it because his plan is to perfect your faith. Maybe he still feels that if he bless you today, he's going to lose you. So his plan this year was to keep you on the fire. So when he would try you, you will come out as gold and pure gold. Trials comes to perfect us. I thank God for my trials. You know when I praise God, sometimes I don't just praise him for what he has done for me. But I thank him because his trials taught me how to sit on the leadership. Hallelujah. Huh. Can I say that? <laughs> If I can sit on the leadership, it's not just because it sounds good to sit on the leadership. It's because when God crushes you, you have no excuse. You cannot talk a minute because you understand that if I don't sit here, I have nowhere else to go. My trials perfect my faith. God will let you go through it because he knows that when you go through it, that's where you have the desire to read your Bible. That's where you have the desire to serve. That's where you have the desire to pray. That's where you have the desire to attend church. That's where you have the desire to say, God, if it's not you, there is no other life than you. That's what faith will do to you. When God will perfect your faith, he will use what you don't like. He will excuse you until you are nowhere else go and say, God, perfect my faith. Perfect my faith. Oh my God. Some of us, our character has to go to fire so we can learn that we are not all that. You know, when you see somebody that's humble, I respect humble people. It takes strength to be humble. It takes
takes strength to say sorry. Hallelujah. It takes strength to say I didn't know. The devil is not afraid about people that know it all. He's afraid of somebody that can say sorry when they know what to do. Faith is being blameless. When you see somebody walking in holiness, that's the people that the devil is afraid of. He's not afraid of somebody that has money. Let me tell you, I told you earlier. He's afraid of somebody that's been through all the trials of life. Somebody that understands the principle of being humble. The Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And on due time, he will exalt you. But to get to the due time, you got to be broken. You gotta be the last sometime. You gotta be the one that people forget. You gotta be the person that people make fun sometimes. You gotta people, you gotta be the person that everybody says, nah, nothing good can come out of that. Those are the people that the devil is afraid of because it takes somebody to be broken enough to say, God, I believe in you in the midst of a battle. Oh God, you can trust me with a trial. My God, faith is not a feeling. I don't wake up and say I have faith. Faith is not an emotion because our emotions are unstable. Faith is God in me. Do you want to know somebody who has faith? He's a man of the word of God. There is no way you can say that you have faith if you don't spend time in the word of God. The reason why we give up so quick is because the word of God hasn't really taken the place in our lives. You see, this is all kind of message that people don't like. People like to have message that get them hype. But I, I think God is a season where we have to make the difference between those who have faith in God for his work and those who have faith in God for who he is. We are in a season of switching. God can no longer trust us with so much if we cannot have the word of God as the base and the foundation of our lives. Because you can see around, the enemy is working, is hitting everywhere. So if the word of God has not really have been the foundation of our faith, we will lose hope. That's why the church is getting empty every day. That's why you see people believing today and give up the next day. Because the word of God has not really been taking place. Faith. Faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's not money that please God. Listen to me. God has money. God has names. God has position. What moved the heart of God is to see somebody who has no money, who has no names, but they still say, God, I'm here. The body of Christ don't have those kind of people anymore because today we become, we come to God as a vendor machine. God, give me, give me, give me, open, 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 do this, do this, and do that. But we don't have people that can come and say, God, even if you close the vending machine, I'm still here, Jesus. Even if you are blessing everybody in town and it looks like you haven't forget about me, Jesus, I'm still going to serve you. God is looking for people that will say, God, even if people don't love me, Lord, I still love them, Jesus. Even if people don't accept me, Jesus, I will accept them. Those are the type of people that the devil cannot touch them because those are the people that God said, spare his life back. My faith, God, we make the difference. It's not what I know. It's not who I am. It's not the people that I know. What will make my difference is when I will lose it all. And I'll still say you give and take away. My heart will choose to say, blessed be your name. God, you gave me and you took it away. God, you give it to her while I was asking it to you. But guess what? I rejoiced with her. God, you, you, you didn't give it to me. Maybe you give it to me for a minute, but you just give it to her later on. God, it's okay. Those are the type of people that the devil cannot touch. The last one, as I'm closing, we are talking about being trusted with trial. God trusted Job with trial. Because he wanted to bless him. 
The Bible says that after all the trials, the letter of blessing, what happened after? The Bible even mentioned the names of his children. I love God because when he trusts you with a trial, it will be fruit of your trials. There is never any pain that we go through for Jesus that never brought any fruit in our life. God will always reward those who endure until the end. The Bible said that at the end of his story, he had children with names. Oh my God. There are trials that you go through today that will have names after. And the Bible speaks about Jemima, uh, Keziah, and Karen. Those are the three children. And when you find the definition of the three children of Job, you can read it in Job chapter 42 due, due to the time we can get deeper on that. The Bible speaks about Jemima. Jemima means peace, dove. It's a symbol of dove. What God will do when he try you, the blessing that he gives you will never be followed with sorrows. I thank God for the men that walk out of my life. I thank God for the people that didn't appreciate me. Because when I see what he brought after, he gave me what money can never buy. Peace you can find, you can try, but you can never find peace. The peace of mind to know that I've been through it all, but I have peace when I can sleep at night. Jemima, that's the first daughter. The second one is Keziah. Keziah means a, a perfume, a fragrance. Hallelujah. You see, when God bless you after a trial, nobody will deny that he anointed you. Hallelujah. As much as men cannot accept that, but no one can deny the anointing of God in your life. After the trials of our lives comes the anointing of the perfume of a good smell. That's what God brings. And the last one is Karen. Karen means the inner beauty. I told you somebody has been broken. Oh, you will know them. Not for how they look outside, but for how they look inside. They have an inside beauty that you can buy. You see, today we can buy hair. Hallelujah. We can buy all these things that we have. But the inner beauty, it's painful. It costs a lot. And you can only have it when you've been crushed enough. When you've been forgetting enough. When you've been left on the corner. That's when God, when, when he restores you at the end. He brings those things that money gold silver cannot buy only the trials that we go through will bring those kind of blessing at the end i like the fact that the bible didn't mention all the names of the children but they mentioned the three daughters and i believe there is a purpose behind this to explain to us that for before he had children but he didn't mention their names but at the end because he was able to wait until the end he was able to endure until the end the reward name. My reward has a name. But it requires me to go through the process. I don't know who this message is for. Hallelujah. I won't be long. I won't be long. Maybe this doesn't concern you. Maybe you don't need or you've never been through trials. But I'm talking to somebody that's in a place where God, why me? It doesn't make sense. I pray, I fast, I read my Bible, I serve, but it seems like life is not fair. Oh, Jesus, Father, the word for you tonight, today is God can see you in your pain. God can see you in your tears. God can see you when nobody else sees you. He knows when you cry in your closets. He knows how you feel about this year. You say, God, it's not fair. Why? 
I thank God for trials. Because if you wait a little bit longer, if you can wait a little bit longer, there is a reward. There is things that He will give you that money, even the money that you can think of, will never be able to give or afford for you. God is trusting you with this trial because He knows that perhaps in your family you are the only one that can handle it. He's trusting you with this because perhaps even in your church you might be the only one that can understand what He's about to do. God is trusting you. But the reward is for sure. There is a reward after all. Let us raise and pray. Father, we thank you. Yes. Oh God, we say yes. It doesn't feel right, God. It doesn't feel like it's happening, Jesus. But I make up my mind to wait on you. I wait on you, Lord. We wait on you, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God. We wait on you. It doesn't matter how long it takes, Jesus. We wait on you, God. It doesn't feel right to be to feel like you forget about us. But we understand, God, that there is a reward when we can endure the pain of today. We understand, God, that you can never fail us. Even when it feels like it's never going to change, God, we wait on you. We will wait, as the apostle said, that I will fight the good fight. I will keep and finish my race and keep my faith. Jesus. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray with me this morning. There is power to say, God, in the name of Jesus, in your name, I shall not quit. I shall not abandon. I need somebody to raise their voice and pray with me this morning and say, God, it might not feel okay right now. It might look like I'm not getting forward. It might look like you are forget about me. But I will endure until the end. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Oh my shana, oh my shekana, Father, I will fight until the end. There is
you may give me strength not to quit, God, not to abandon, not to forget, Father, all the promises that you gave me. In the name of Jesus, I will not quit, I will not abandon, I will not abandon in the name of Jesus. Father, I like draw my love that you are my redeemer and you will stand at last. You are the last word for my life. In the name of Jesus, I will not quit. I will not quit God. I will not quit Jesus. I will not quit now. I will not abandon now. This is not a time for me to lose my head. This is not a time for me to lose my focus. I will not stop. Father, pour our hard words. I will not quit. I will face my giant. I will face my fear. I will face my fears. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, up. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Hallelujah. Break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. I hear somebody say, God, I don't even think I have a praise song for you at the end of this, this year. But I need to encourage that person to say thank you for the trials. Thank you for the trials. Thank you for the sickness. Thank you for the disease. Thank you for the misunderstanding. Thank you for the confusion. Because I know, God, that this trial has been trusted by you. And I know, God, that there is a reward at the end. In Jesus' name. Father, renew somebody's strength. Renew someone's faith. Father, I declare that, Father, every person that's in this place, God, will not lose their faith. They will not lose their faith. Father, coming adversities, coming trials or not, Father, I declare they will not lose their faith. Whether people abandon them or not, whether they feel alone or not, I believe, God, that you trust them with this trial because at the end, there is a reward that will be, Father, given out to them. There is a peace that money will not be able to buy. There is a joy that money will not be able to buy. There is a song of praise that will be burnt out after these trials. Not for men's glory, but for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will fight the good fight. We will finish the race. We will keep our faith. Devil, we will keep our faith. Devil, we will keep our faith. Let me tell you, devil, we will not lose it. We will keep our faith because you have a divine limitation upon my life. You can try me. You can test me. But I will keep my faith. Devil, children are not. Marriage are not. Diploma are not. 